Welcome to another episode and today we're going over on how to test and replace a mass airflow sensor. Let's get to it. Now right off the bat we need to locate the sensor. Of course you can use the web or simply look for the air filter and the air housing. Typically right after the air filter, you will find the MAF sensor. We can disconnect the harness connector. Now this is really two sensors built into one on Mr. Subaru here. This is not only a MAF sensor, but also the intake air temp sensor. So it has five terminals. If yours is more simpler and you only find three terminals, this will be a lot easier, but nonetheless, this is what you want to do before you do anything. So what we're going to do is test this sensor on the bench without any special scan tools or a sophisticated scan tool. But before I do that, I need to see how this is powered on. So we have five terminals. One of these terminals is receiving battery voltage or positive battery voltage. I need to find out which terminal that is. So to do that, I have a test probe. Now these are very inexpensive. I will link this kit below if you do happen to need one. In a pinch, you can use a paper clip, but make sure it is very, very thin and that you do not damage this harness connector. So with our little probe, we can insert it into the first terminal here. See it fits perfectly. And then I have a digital multimeter. In this case, we need to obtain a volts DC reading. Now, if you've never used a multimeter, very, very easy to use. Simply plug in the leads that come with the meter. These are roughly $25, by the way. Okay, black is ground. That's any good metal parts on the engine. And then red is going directly to our test probe. And this is why it's really nice to have one of these kits because you simply plug in your leads, little alligator clip action, right to red, okay? So this is the red lead running to the meter. Let me find a good ground. Good ground, typically, if you can find like a, a fastener, a bolt, a washer. I know on the back end of this AC compressor, because the last time I did a video on this car showing on how to test the magnetic clutch right back here, I know is a good ground. So let's turn on the ignition key. Do not start the car. Just, just simply turn the key. Alrighty, here we go. And what we're looking for is battery let me make sure you guys can see this. Battery voltage. So roughly we should see 12 volts. Right now this is bouncing, bouncing around at millivolts. So don't mind that. So here we go. Let me get a good ground here. And let's see what we have. Okay, now that's five volts. That's not what we're looking for. We want a solid 12. So all that I'm going to do is simply move this lead to the next one, to the next terminal, and see if we have 12 volts. Okay, nothing there. That's a millivolt reading. Next, terminal number three. Here we go. And there you go, you see that? There's our 12 volts. So now, 100% certainty, this is receiving positive voltage. And you'll see in a moment why this is important. This is really, really crucial. Turn off the key. This is really, really crucial because without doing this, you're going to be second guessing yourself constantly. Now you may be thinking, why do all of this? I can simply replace the sensor. Well, these sensors are not cheap. This is a Denso unit. This is factory from Subaru. It's still the original sensor after 13 years and almost 180,000 miles. But many manufacturers, they use Denso for their sensors. Excellent, excellent part made in Japan. They're not cheap. 
You don't want to go very, very cheap parts. Always buy high quality parts, okay? So this is why you want to test it because why spend a lot of money if maybe you just had an electrical issue? So let's remove this from the vehicle. And there we go. So now let me explain what we're going to do and then we'll run it live. So on, on back of the harness connector, we know that the middle terminal here is the one that powers or sends positive voltage to our sensor. So that's the middle prong inside the sensor. That's how this is powered on. What we're going to do essentially is do what your vehicle does. You turn the ignition key, it sends power to the sensor, and then the vehicle's computer receives a reading. We just want to obtain the reading and see if we can change the reading. If you look at the sensor, you see this little notch? So what this is doing is measuring the amount of air going through it. So what we're going to do, so once again, I'm using the probe kit. I know that the middle wire is positive. So the next wire, I'm inserting this probe. Now I'll explain why I'm checking these two wires. I know by process of elimination, it's either the, the right two wires or the left two wires, okay? So let's insert this guy until I feel the metal prong inside the harness connector, okay? And then I will give you a close up here in a moment. It can be a little difficult, especially with really good harness connectors like Subaru makes. These are excellent. Okay, so now I have the leads hooked up to the multimeter. We're going to turn on the ignition key one more time. And I'm also going to plug in the sensor before we do that. So now I'm re-plugging in our sensor, don't install it in the housing. You'll see why in a moment. Just plug it back in. Okay, let's turn the ignition key. Make sure we set this up just right. You'll see why in a moment. So I had to turn off the light here so you can see the voltage better. But coming back over to the sensor, there's a cutout and you're going to blow where that cutout is. That's where it's receiving the air coming through the intake and measuring it. As you blow into this, watch the meter and it should change, okay? So here we go. You see that? That's it. This is a working sensor. So this is a little unorthodox, but if you want to do this from the convenience of a scan tool, you need something quite sophisticated and that will cost you a couple of hundred dollars for the most part, for most of them. Not hard to do. This took me less than 25 minutes filming. So if I did this off camera, it's a lot, a lot faster. Just look for this cutout, find where the power is, hook up your leads and that's it. Now wrapping it up, if you hook up the two leads in this case, if you have three terminals, this is way easier. But if you have five like this sensor and you hook up the two leads, nothing happens, check the other two leads. That means the leads that you are testing is for the intake air temp sensor. Don't forget, this is two sensors in one. Mass airflow, air intake, okay? So if you see nothing happening, check the other two leads and see if there's a change on the meter. You need the probe kit. It makes all the difference. These make all the difference in the world. I've done this years ago with paper clips. You can do it, but a lot of times you damage the weather stripping that protects everything. These do not hurt anything. It's well worth the investment. Well worth the investment. I hope this helps you. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as well. We'll see you next time.